Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Well, I had planned on uh, doing a video on this knife a week or so ago. This is the uh, Marbles 489. It's a uh, crown stag buoy, according to Marbles. I don't really consider this a buoy knife because, uh, well, for me, a buoy knife needs to have a blade that's at least 10 inches or so. And this really has uh, what comes out as a 7.5 inch blade. And it's got a, but it's a, a pretty knife. You can see there with that. Um, the Marbles 489. It is made in Pakistan and it is made by Marbles. It's Marbles. Uh, I'm all flustered simply because, uh, well, Skip stole my thunder on this knife. Um, I Like I said, I was hoping to have this up about a week or so ago. Uh, but Skip grabbed it and decided to do a Fun Knife Friday on it. And I, I got to give him uh, props. He did a, a pretty good job with this knife. Especially when he decided to take my knife and shove it through one of those old uh, popcorn tins. And, you know, my knife. But what the heck, all right? It wasn't his knife, so I guess he didn't care if it got messed up or not. But uh, if you look here, despite going through uh, a popcorn tin on numerous occasions, uh, the tip of the knife is uh, not bad at all. But in any case, um, I figured now that it's been a week or so, I will go ahead and uh, do a video on this knife. Um, it kind of like cover the stuff that Skip missed. And uh, we can start here with the sheath. And uh, as you can see here, this is the embossing on the uh, sheath. Uh, the sheath um, locks up pretty well. You got the marbles there, which is, I'm not sure if they intentionally had the marbles uh, lined up this way because it's running the length of the sheath. And uh, no, it does not turn easily. So uh, that is just the way it is. I don't know if that's the way it's going to be with everyone else's or not, but. It is almost straight up and down, the marbles there. Uh, still not a problem. One of the only issues I noticed with the knife is um, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the, and Skip did mention, the blade is not lined up perfectly with the handle because the handle is uh, twisted to one side or the other. But also the the point here on the uh, guard does not line up perfectly with the blade here. It is slightly off to the uh, marble side. So the point favors this side. So the blade seems to be laying a little crooked in the, uh, in the handle. Um, doesn't seem to affect the uh, holding of the blade or anything else, but it definitely does seem that uh, when you're holding the knife, it, it kind of tilts in towards the uh, center of your body if you're left-handed. It is definitely straighter if you're right-handed and you're holding it out in a natural grip. So um, the blade definitely does have that little bit of twist. Again, it doesn't affect the uh, handling of the blade. The blade stock is very thick. Um, SMKW gave it at uh, a tenth of an inch, but I see it at three sixteenths of an inch behind the spine here. Uh, maybe they were talking about near the, uh, the uh, just behind the cutting edge there, which comes in closer to just under an eighth of an inch. So maybe that's where they're talking about it being a tenth of an inch down here near the, uh, right by the grind there. So it is a very thick blade overall, and uh, if you want this to be a slicer, you're going to need to really take off a lot of the edge down there. It does have a concave uh, grind going to it, and it does feel it. It doesn't feel like it was cut out of a a large blank of steel because the uh, you can feel some. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel perfectly smooth when you're running your hand down it. It definitely does not. Um, and I've noticed that with other knives out of Pakistan. So this could very well be a blade that is hand forged. I don't know. You do notice the, um, you've got the brass guard there. And then you've got the imitation turquoise 
and the two pieces of imitation tortoise shell here followed by another piece of um, imitation turquoise and you have the brass spacers between the the uh, first piece of turquoise and then uh, the uh, tortoise shell it would have been nice if they would have had a brass spacer right there between the imitation tortoise shell there um, they listed as a hidden tang my bet is it is a rat tail tang going in there. I have no idea how far in the rat tail tang goes. I would love it if this actually had a uh, more of a push tang going in here, even if the push tang only went about that far down um, because of all the uh, stones and everything here. However, you did see um, the skip shoving in through uh, a metal can and stuff. Um, I've hit it against a couple cardboard boxes, and the handle is still tight. Still, this is more of a showpiece than something that you're going to want to brutalize. Um, I read a review where somebody has used this uh, on their boat for quite a while, uh, pounding on stuff and cutting rope and everything with it, and, and having good luck with it. So, um, and it's definitely an eye catcher for for something like that. Um, you notice here the back end of it this is genuine stag this portion here is stag however um the, the crown stag here they've hollowed it out uh, to some degree and then what you have here is an epoxy filling it in uh, and that so this is not true stag at this part um, but it kind of matches the color of the other stag going up here um, and at first i was wondering if this was just uh something that was based off of an actual piece of stag but no this is actual genuine stag the photo that you see online does not match what you're seeing here so and i've seen uh, a couple other ones so they're all different to some degree um, with that said um i do like the way the tortoise shell looks here uh, it's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, it doesn't show up nearly as well on the camera as it does in person. The turquoise, however, uh, could have been better. Um, the um, little lines in here are a little bit just geometric. I mean, you've got this here, which looks like, uh, I don't know, half an oval. And then you've got a diamond there, a triangle there. Uh, uh, a rectangle there. Uh, I I guess I haven't seen enough actual turquoise to know if that works or not. Um, it is kind of interesting, but uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, better veins uh, in the turquoise than what you see on this. And one of the reasons I was picking up this knife was because of the uh, the little turquoise accents in the handle. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. I've seen better looking uh, synthetic turquoise. Let me just put it that way. Um, obviously, the, um, the weakest link on the knife is the fact that it has a hidden tang, and the only way to determine, um, you know, how much brute force you can use on this knife would be uh, uh, getting a photo of the tang. Um, someone would have to basically take the whole knife apart. I'm not one of those people who are going to be crazy enough to uh, spend $40 on a knife just to deconstruct it uh, and show it. Um, but I would, I, I wish um, that when um, SMKW and other companies, when they would make a knife with a hidden tang, I wish they would show the actual construction of the knife so that we would know what's going on and then they could um, also give a reason for that, you know. For instance, um, I've seen plenty of these uh, things that were listed as full tangs where basically the handle was welded into the blade. Um, you know, if, if that's strong enough, then let us know. But um, don't call it a full tang. Um, they just list this as a hidden tang. Does it go in this far? Does it go in this far? You know, those are the questions that a lot of people would like to know. I would hope that it goes at least back this far so that it is somehow pinned into the uh, antler uh, or glued into the antler or whatever, and that it is just not going back into this area because then what is holding all this together? Um, it would be great if the hidden tang 
had gone all the way through the uh, the uh, epoxy on the back of the crown stag here. I would have loved to have seen the tang back here. But I also know that companies have faked that too by putting a cap here um, to make it look like the tang has gone all the way through, but nothing is really in between here. So uh, you can fake a tang easy enough, but it would be nice to know just what kind of tang is in here and how far it is. I do know that uh, it's pretty solid. How solid it would be um, if you were to try and abuse it and beat the crap out of it, who knows. I would assume that uh, with enough abuse, all of these parts will eventually loosen up. But I think with um, your typical day-to-day -day use, like uh, at, at a campsite or something where you're basically just cutting and hacking it, you know, mostly soft items like meat or feathering wood or something like that, um, this would hold up pretty well. This has more of an axe grind, though, than uh, than a slicing grind. So if you wanted to do some uh, basic meat slicing on this, I got a feeling what you would probably want to do is um, reprofile the blade. As it is, this is more like a cleaver than a, than a, like, like a slicing knife. So that is something else to consider there. Also, um, the blade length... Um, SMKW gives it a blade length of six and three quarter inches. Well, what they're talking about there is actually the cutting edge on this blade. So six and three quarter inches there. So this uh, area up here where you got the choil, they're not including that in the blade length. If you include that, if you go all the way from the guard, which is uh, what uh, most uh, <laughs> law enforcement agencies would do, they'd go from the guard to the tip of the blade you're looking at right at seven and a half inches overall so it's a pretty chunky blade not to mention if you were putting it in a sheath you would also go from the guard to the tip of the blade which is seven and a half inches not six and three quarter inches so uh there you have it uh, that's the mr 489 uh, crown stag buoy by um uh, by marbles hope you enjoyed the video and uh well stick around for some slides oh and one more thing before we get to the uh, slides i started looking closely at where the tang enters through the uh, brass guard there and i was able to basically measure the the width of the tang here uh, it looks to be about five eighths of an inches and we know that it's about three sixteenths of an inch thick there so that's how large the tang is when it is entering. And what I have is this very strong magnet. And, um, well, you can see it holds really well. Um, and I decided I would run it along the handle here and see if I can pick up the tang. And indeed I could. I can pick up the tang quite well uh, all the way through the turquoise and basically into the stag over here. Notice how it's spinning there. And it really continues to hold quite well. Um, I can feel it. It, it. When I put it like so, it draws me to right around here. So uh, about um, three quarters of an inch or an inch into the uh, stag, it seems, is how far the um, tang goes. Uh, you, I can feel it even better on this side. If you notice the, the way the handle is uh, uh, set up, the tang actually is closer to this side of the stag. And when I'm feeling the tang with the uh, magnet, it pulls to right about here. You see uh, the little white mark there? That is how far the tang goes in. So it's about a three inch long tang that's uh, three sixteenths of an inch thick and five eighths of an inch, uh, well, five eighths of an inch, no, five eighths of an inch wide, three sixteenths of an inch thick and about three inches long, going to somewhere right around there. As far as I can tell, it is not pinned anywhere, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, it would have been nice to have seen a pin or something don't think that's a pin that might be a pin but it doesn't look it 
and there's nothing corresponding on the other side. So uh, it would have been nice to have seen a pin somewhere in the uh, uh, stag back here, but there isn't one. Now, what could have also happened is it could be one of those um, tangs that go in about three quarters of an inch and then has basically the the uh, rat tail welded to it and runs all the way back, in which case the rat tail would go this far back. But um, I got to tell you, the, uh, the way this magnet grabs it, it feels more like there is no change in the steel until you get to the very end. So I believe this is probably a, um, a three inch long push tang holding this blade into the handle. In any case, with that said, now let's go to the uh, slideshow. I thought that was important to point out. Um, so I have a little more confidence in this knife at this point. Let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.